my pranams to all atma jyotis divine light of the self let us contemplate on essential teaching of bhagavad gita in next few days in very series of talks bhagavad gita means song of the divine song of the lord song of the supreme it is song of the divine and why does the divine sing why does the lord sing we have heard the devotee singing it's called bhajans prayers devotees sing the glory of the lord devotees praise the glory of the lord but why lord sings why should lord sing devotees sing the glory of the lord to bring the lord in their life lord also sings that's called bhagavad gita the song of the lord is to take the devotee back into himself back to the lord back to the godhead back to the supreme reality so while devotee sings lord to bring lord into his life lord sings to bring the devotee back to himself back to the supreme reality so this is bhagavad gita the setting of bhagavad gita is very interesting the bhagavad gita as a song is a part of the mahabharata the great epic of mahabharata which is a fight between pandavas and kauravas is a massive fight which happened a few thousand years ago probably 5000 years back and mahabharata the epic mahabharata has more than 100 about 100000 shlokas or stanzas bhagavad gita is about, about has 700 shlokas as a part of mahabharata mahabharata is a play of human ambitions human desires human greed human necessities it's a fight between two dynast uh, the the people of pand pandu kal pandavas and kauravas pandavas represent the righteousness while kauravas represent the unrighteous attitude like towards life this fight culminated in a war called mahabharata war and bhagavad gita was taught by shri krishna to his disciple devotee friend called arjuna the context is very interesting mahabharata has many many characters the blind king duryodhan dhritarashtra who is actually so fond of his children uh, and keeps encouraging his children irrespective of the right or wrong what they are doing gandhari his wife shri krishna pandavas who represent the right right way of living kauravas who represent the wrong way of living vidura the wise man draupadi the uh, the lady who who fought for her honor karna and many many characters interestingly mahabharata is a psychological profiling of people every character which can you can think of 
uh, any character you can think of as a human being, it's there in Mahabharata. All types of human, psych human beings are profiled in Mahabharata in one way or the other way. And the play of human emotions, the play of human power, play of human, uh, play of human emotions, power, everything is depicted in Mahabharata. Essentially, Mahabharata is a psychological drama. Drama of all types of people, all types of characters. There is not a single character in human society who is not represented in Mahabharata in some way or the other way. And obviously, the human greed, the human ambition, the human desire, all these things will lead to intense turmoil, fight. Sri Vedavyasa Maharshi, who composed this epic Mahabharata, and who wrote Bhagavad Gita as a part of Mahabharata wanted to depict the turmoil human beings go through, the suffering they go through, the decisions they have to make in life, right and wrong. All this is all these are represented through the story of Mahabharata, which is psychological profiling of people. Then, Sri Vyasamarshi wanted to communicate the message that in spite of all shortcoming of human beings, in spite of all difficulties and challenges, in spite of suffering, in, fight, in spite of the fight which goes on in this society for power, for greed, for ambition, there is a path for human evolution. You can evolve from where you are. So that evolutionary path, the spiritual uplifting path is told as 700 shlokas in Bhagavad Gita, shlokas of Bhagavad Gita. So from human life, how to make the life divine, leading a divine life. This is the message of Bhagavad Gita. Human beings are there 5000 years back. Their profile will not change. Okay? Human beings are human beings. The same tussle will be there to modern day society also. In spite of all this, you can evolve spiritually. That is the message of Bhagavad Gita. That's why Bhagavad Gita is a part of Mahabharata epic. What is there in Bhagavad Gita? Bhagavad Gita has 18 chapters. It's a conversation between Shri Krishna, the Supreme Reality, God, the Lord, and Arjuna, who is a friend and who, uh, who becomes a devotee in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, where Arjuna and uh, uh, where the armies of Pandavas and Kauravas are ready to fight. Sri Krishna gives the message of Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna to bring him out of the despondency and despair which he is facing in front uh, while facing the war. war. Bhagavad Gita has 18 chapters which can be divided into 6 chapters, 6 chapters and 6 chapters. First 6 chapters deal with the individual. Second, second set of 6 chapters deal with the Lord. Third, chap, third, six, third set of 6 chapters deal with the relationship between the Lord and the individual. The first six chapter 
deal with the individual called Jivatma. It is nothing but I, you and all others, all living beings, all human beings who are called individualized souls, Jivatmas. Sixth chapter educate us about our own nature, nature of the individual. The next sixth chapter educate us about the nature of the supreme reality, nature of the Lord, nature of Bhagwan. And third six chapters tell us in detail the relationship between these two, Jivatma and Paramatma. There is a great saying in Vedanta that thou art tat tam asi you are that. The first six chapters refer to you. You as a Jivatma, as an individual. It tells you about your own true nature not as a body, mind and intellect, but as a pure consciousness. The second six, six chapters refer to that. Tat, tat means that. That is the supreme reality. Brahman, Bhagavan, Lord. And next six chapters speak about Asi, that thou art. You are also that supreme reality. You are not different from the reality. You are not different from that supreme reality. You are that reality in fact. In our ignorance, we, we, are, we, we actually identify ourselves with the body, mind and intellect instead of identifying the supreme reality. So Bhagavad Gita message is to make you understand your true nature as not body, mind or intellect but pure consciousness one with the supreme reality. So this is the essential message of Bhagavad Gita that thou art the Thomasini.